In this video we're going to look at an amortization table for an, as an installment loan and also see what equity means and calculate equity. So example 6 we're going to um, first find the monthly payment and then uh, make an amortization table and then um, calculate the equity after a certain number of payments on, on the computer and then example 7 We'll do the same thing, find the monthly payment, make an amortization table, and then um, find the equity on the land after a certain number of payments. Okay. So example six, if you borrow $1,000 at 12% APR to buy a computer, and then if you pay off the loan in 12 monthly payments, Okay, you've got to find the monthly payment. Okay, that's the first thing. Find the monthly payment. Now, so I want to make it clear that when you pay off a loan in monthly payments, these are equal monthly payments, right? They're all the same, same amount. Like we pay off 150 bucks a month or whatever, right? So um, the first thing you're going to do is find the monthly payment. Now, you already have the formula for that and you know how to do it so please press pause and find the monthly payment okay so of course you need to calculate the monthly rate r and you have to calculate t the number of payments so press pause and use the formula and find the monthly payment okay okay i hope you press pause and try that i'm going to show you the answer now so i hope you really have pressed pause and tried this I'm going to show you the answer now. So the monthly rate R is 12% over 12, which is 1% or 0 0.01, right? T is 12, that's 12 payments. 1 plus R is 1.01, okay? And the formula, if you got the formula, the monthly payment is the amount times R times 1 plus R to the power of T all over 1 plus r to the power of t minus 1 on the bottom. Okay, So if you've made a mistake up until this point, please um, you know, use the correct formula or, or whatever and then go ahead and, and, and work out. But you should get this number on the top, this number on the bottom, so see if you can get that. Or if you do it in a whole one line entry, that's okay. Just so long as your final answer um, rounds to eighty-eight dollars eighty-five cents. So see if you can figure that out. Okay, so now we're going to make an amortization table showing payments over the first five months. So, how that works is we look at the payment number or the end of month one or payment number is the first column. Okay. So payment number one, and then the amount of the payment. So the first payment is going to be, of course, eighty-eight dollars, eighty-five cents. All payments are going to be that, aren't they? Because that's what you pay every month. So uh, in the first month, you pay that, and then the thing about it is, the thing about it is that you have just borrowed thousand dollars at 12 percent interest now the person that um, has loaned you that they're making an investment on you and they want a return on their investment okay. and so at the end of month one they want interest on that they want interest at 12 percent APR so the interest they want and of course it comes out the, out of your monthly payment so it's kind of invisible but you've got to calculate the interest um, or the amount of the payment that's applied the amount of the payment that's applied to interest or the interest on the the balance or whatever way you want to think about it um, what they what they actually get you see is at the monthly rate of 1%, they actually get 1% of a thousand dollars in interest out of your first payment. Okay. 
So um, if we calculate that, that's 0 0.01 times 1,000, right? Which is 10. So at the end of the first month, you pay 88.85, you know, to the to the uh, bank or 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 whatever, and out of that they earn ten dollars. So they get 78.85 back, which is their own money. But they they actually get um, they actually get ten dollars, you know, in in earnings. They're earning on your on your uh, loan. So the amount that that's applied to the balance owed or the amount of the payment that's applied to the balance owed so so you pay 88.85 10 of dollars of that is goes straight to interest and 78 dollars 85 cents goes to the balance and therefore the balance is reduced okay so then we have a column called outstanding balance which just means like the current balance the balance right now or the balance remaining what do you think it is see if you can figure out what the outstanding balance is <coughs> any idea well now isn't it wouldn't you take a thousand dollars which is the initial balance or the principal and subtract the amount of the payment that was applied to the balance owed or 78.85 so you don't subtract the interest that's what the the bank earned but they they will subtract this from the balance so now you owe less so 1000 subtract 78.85 so now you owe $921.15. Okay. So payment number two, or the end of month two, how much do we pay? What's our payment for, for month two? Well, it's the same as any other month, eighty-eight, eighty-five. because when you take out a loan and you're making monthly payments, they're all equal, same amount, right? But what's invisible is how much of this payment is applied to interest and how much is applied to balance and how much is your outstanding balance and this is what the amortization table shows okay so what we do is now to get the amount of this applied to interest one percent of what do you think so at the end of month two the bank earns interest on your loan what do they earn? One percent of this, right? One percent of of what was in the account, you know, up until the end of month two, which is nine hundred twenty-one dollars fifteen cents. So they take a monthly rate of what's in the account, you know, up up until the end of month two or in month two. So zero point zero one times 921.15 is approximately to the nearest cent what's that so that'll work out to be nine dollars twenty one cent right so one percent of this goes to interest and therefore one percent of sorry one percent of the payment goes to interest so how much of this payment goes to the balance owed right So if this goes to interest, uh, if, if if this goes to interest, how much how much of the payment goes to the balance owed? Any idea? Well, wouldn't we just um, take our payment, eighty eight point eight five, and subtract the amount of the payment that's going to interest, right? And if you take that, then you get seventy nine sixty four. So that's the amount of the payment. That's going to reduce the balance. Seventy nine sixty four. And of course, the amount going to the balance, right? The seventy nine sixty four. So the seventy nine point six four plus the amount going to the interest, nine point two one, must equal the eight 
the amount of the payment. So you make this payment, some of it goes to the balance, some of it goes to interest, right? Just like here, uh, 10 plus 78.85 makes 88.85. This amount of the payment goes to interest, this amount goes to reducing the balance. So at the end of month two, what's the outstanding balance? Press pause and see if you can figure that out. Okay, I hope you've tried it. I'm going to do it now. The outstanding balance at the end of month one was $921.15. Then this amount from the payment was applied to the balance. So it's applied to reduce the balance. So you subtract that, $79.64. Okay. So that's 921.15 minus 79 point six four okay and then we get eight four one point five one okay so can you do month three press pause and see if you can complete this line Okay, I hope you've tried it. I'm going to do it now. So, um, for payment number three, at the end of month three, we pay the monthly amount, 88.85. The only question is, how much of that is going to go to reducing the balance, and how much is going to go to interest? Well, look, you still have this amount loaned out, okay, and the computer company or the credit union or the bank or the credit card company, whoever it is, wants to earn interest on the money they gave you. You still still owe them 840 bucks, so they want interest on that. What interest do they want? 12% APR, which is 1% monthly, right? They want 1% of the amount of money that you haven't given them yet, that, that they've loaned out to you. So you're an investment, they're investing in you, and they're making money off you. So that's 0 0.01 times 841.51, which is approximately to the nearest cent, let's say 842. Okay. Now, that's the amount of interest they earn. So, so you make this payment, and this they get that in interest, and then the rest of the payment goes off to reducing the balance, right? So, how much goes to the balance? Any idea? Press pause and do that if you need to. So, isn't it 88.85 minus 8.42? Or, and so, 80 dollars and 43 cents goes to reducing the balance and so what's the new balance? Press pause and calculate the new balance if you need to. Okay, I'll do it now. So the new balance is you take what was in there already, 841.51 and you subtract this. This is the amount that gets applied to the balance, 80.43. So that's 841.51 minus 80.43 and what's in the ba account now? $761.08. Okay, so please press pause and do the payments for month four and month five, or payment number four and payment number five. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to go over payment number four really quickly. Okay, So, here it goes. The outstanding balance is $761.08. That's still the amount that we need, that we owe. So every month we make the same payment, $88.85. But how much of that goes to reducing the balance and how much goes to interest? Well, we still owe this amount. And so the, the credit card company or whoever wants to make money and they want 1% of the amount of money that they've still loaned out which is 761.08 so if we calculate that we get approximately $7.61 right okay and therefore this amount of the payment is interest that goes to the 
the company 88.85 and then the rest of the payment goes to the balance so to calculate the balance amount we take this and subtract it from the payment and we get 81.24 okay and what's the new balance well this is the amount of the payment that is applied to the balance owed and so this gets subtracted from here so we go 761.08 and we subtract 8124 761.08 subtract 81.24 and we should get 679.84 right and payment 5 or month 5 press pause and do month 5 if you haven't got it yet so really quickly I'll do it now. We make a payment of 88.85. 1% of the outstanding balance, which is 679.84, goes to the uh, company. So that times 697 or 679.84 is approximately six dollars and eighty cents. Six eighty. Okay. And. Um, this gets subtracted from here and so eighty two dollars and five cents goes to reducing the balance and so um, six seven nine point eight four minus eighty two point oh five gives us five nine seven point seven nine and so this is the outstanding balance after payment five or at the end of month five okay so that's the amortization table and let's have a look at the definition and you can write this down if you want to try and remember it or understand it so an amortization table for an installment loan shows for each payment made the amount applied to interest which we did this is the amount applied to interest the amount applied to the balance owed these are the amounts of the payment this is the payment this is the amount of the payments applied to the balance owed and the outstanding balance Okay, so this is the, the outstanding balance, the balance that's left after each payment number, or after e at the end of each month, okay? So that's the amortization table. Now, equity. Your equity in an item is the part of the principal you have paid. Okay, or in other words, it's the amount of the item you actually own. Okay, so you own part of an item, basically, as you make payments. You, when you're done with all the payments, you, you, you own the whole thing, but you don't own something until you've fully paid for it, right? So, what is your equity in the computer after two payments? Or, in other words, how much of the computer do you kind of own after two payments, so to speak, right? So, after two payments, right, the outstanding balance was eight hundred forty one dollars fifty one cents so this is what we owe we start off by owing one thousand of course because that's what it cost and then after the first payment we owe this amount and um, this amount is applied to the balance so so we kind of after the first payment we kind of owe own we own seventy eight dollars and eighty five cents of the computer it's a little part of the computer right maybe the the space bar or something right the, the enter key okay after two payments we owe this amount so the the company has still has this loaned out to us but we we do own some of the computer in a way so our equity in the computer is take 1000 and subtract uh 841.51 okay and what does that give us so 1000 subtract what's still owed 841.51 so after the second payment in a way we kind of own a hundred and fifty eight dollars and forty nine cents of the thousand dollar computer at the moment okay and just for fun I'm just gonna put that as a percentage so we'll put one five eight forty nine over one thousand okay so we'll put the amount that we kind of have paid on the computer 
really, you know, after two payments. And the price of the computer, and if you put that in a calculator, so divide this by 1,000, you get uh, 0 0.158, you know, etc., which is approximately, um, you know, 0 0.16, let's say, or 16%. Right, if you move this to the right. So basically after two payments we kinda own sixteen percent of the computer, right? In a way. Think of think of it that way. So equity is, is like, you know, the amount of, of the thing that you own after a certain amount of payments. So we'll see if you can do this one yourself. What is the equity in the computer after three payments? Okay, I hope you've tried it. Press pause and try it if you need to. So, the computer's, the principal was 1,000. So we take the principal, we subtract what we still owe. We still owe 76108. But that means that if we do this subtraction, um, that means that we have definitely paid off $238.92 on the computer. So in a way we own this amount of the computer. So this is the equity and, and like you give your answer you know in dollars like that. That's the answer and this was the answer here. Okay, This is the equity after two payments. The equity is in dollars and this is the equity after three payments. Okay. So what is the equity after five payments? So just, just put the definition up there again. Your equity in an item is the part of the principal you have paid. Okay. So what is your equity in the computer after five payments? So if we go to payment five, we still owe the outstanding balance of the loan is five nine seven seventy nine. So we still owe that amount to the bank. They and so, but we have paid off every the rest of it. So one thousand minus what we owe is one thousand minus um, five nine seven point seven nine, which is. Four oh two twenty one. So after five payments, this is our equity in the computer. This is kind of the amount of the part of the computer we own, or the the amount of principal we've already paid off. That's all. The amount of principal we've already paid off, right? Okay. So let's have a look at example seven. And you borrow. $250,000 at an APR of 4% to purchase a plot of land. You pay off the loan in monthly payments over 10 years. Find the monthly payment. Okay, So we're going to do that first. And in order, order to do that, you need to calculate the monthly rate R, and then you got to get 1 plus R, and then of course you have to get T, right? The amount of payments. So, or the number of uh, months, right? So press pause, calculate R, 1 plus R, and T. Okay, I hope you've tried it. R is 4% over 12, which is 0 0.04 over 12, which is 0 0.0033333. I guess I'll use eight digits just to be sure. 1 plus R is 1.0033333. Okay, and T is not just 10. T is measured in months. So it's 10 years, C times 12, which is 120. Okay. So now press pause and see if you can write down the formula for this and then you can go ahead and calculate the whole thing and check the video if you want. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. So the monthly payment equals the amount of the loan, 250000 times R, so 0 0.0033, and lots of threes, times 1 plus R to the power of T, 1.0033, 33, 
3, 3 to the power of 120 all over 1 plus r to the power of 3, 1.0033, 3, 3, 3, 3 to the power of 120 minus 1. Okay? So, um, what does that give us? Press pause and do that. Okay, I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do, do it now. You should have got um, about 1242.3588, or very close to that, over 0 0.4908. 32088 and that equals you should have got 2531.1279 or something close to that which is approximately to the nearest cent. What did you get to the nearest cent? Hopefully 2531.13 so 2531 dollars and 13 cent. So you're borrowing a quarter of a million at an APR of 4% to, to buy land and you pay off the loan in monthly payments over 10 years. So you're going to make an amortization table showing payments over the first three months, not years, months. Okay. So we're going to go payment number payment number one and the payment we make is what? What do we pay in the first month? Well, you see, when you take out a monthly loan, you pay equal amounts. So you pay off the loan in equal, equal monthly payments over 10 years. And that equal monthly payment is $2,531.13. Okay? The only problem is the bank has le loaned you a quarter of a million and they want interest on the money that they don't have anymore okay so we've got to give the amount of the payment that's applied to interest or that's given away as interest right to the bank so you see initially you've taken out a quarter of a million and so they want 4% APR which is you know this amount 0 0.00333 they want this amount of their um, amount they th this percentage of the amount they loaned you in interest after the first month okay so what does that give us So if we calculate that, 0 0.003033 times 250,000, we should get $833.33. Okay? So you make this payment and a whopping more than $800 goes to interest. That's a lot, right? And it actually got a low percentage rate, so it's not as bad as it could be and then we look at how much of our payment goes to reducing the balance. So how much of the payment is applied to the balance owed. Okay, so if this amount goes to interest, how much goes to the balance owed? So we take 2531.13 and we subtract the amount of our payment that went to interest, 833.33, right? And we should get 1697.8, right? This amount goes to the balance owed. And so, therefore, our balance reduces. It reduces by 250,000 minus what? Minus this amount that went to the balance owed, 1697.8, okay? So this, we, we calculate 250,000 two and then we subtract 1697.8 and we get 2483.02.2 and this is our new balance.
or the outstanding balance or the current balance or what's left to be paid off however you want to think of it that's outstanding balance okay so payment number two press pause and calculate the payment the amount applied to interest the amount applied to the balance owed and the outstanding balance okay I hope you've tried it I'm going to do it really quickly now so we pay two thousand five hundred thirty one dollars thirteen cent the same amount every month how much of this is applied to the interest what you do is you take the outstanding balance this is what's still owed to the bank and they want to earn interest on the money they've lent out so the interest they want is four percent APR they're earning money on you you're an investment so they're gonna collect from that what are they gonna collect they're gonna collect uh, 0.33 percent or this uh, decimal times two four eight three zero two point two what does that make Uh, I guess I'll you should get approximately eight hundred twenty seven dollars and sixty seven cent okay so this amount of money goes to interest and this comes from your monthly payment so how much goes to the balance owed so two five three one point one three minus eight two seven point six seven and we get 1703.46 okay so this amount goes to reducing the balance so what's the outstanding balance press pause and do that if you need to so what you should do is take this number and subtract this number the outstanding balance from the previous month and subtract the amount of our payment that went to reducing the balance. So we go 248302.2 and we subtract 1703.46 and we should get 246598.74. Okay. Press pause and do uh, payment number three. What are all the fi figures here? Hope you press pause and try this. I'm going to do it now. So once again, we've the same payment, 2531.13. What amount of the payment is applied to interest? The bank still has owes us this, which is not as much. And so as you like you're you'll see that the amount applied to interest reduces because as you keep making payments, you don't actually owe as much anymore. And so they can't make as much interest off of you because you don't owe them as much, right? So 0 0.00333333 times 2465.98.74 should be approximately $821.99. Or if you're close to that, you know, let's say 822, that's fine as well. And then the amount applied to the balance owed would be 1709.14. You take this number, subtract this number, okay? and what is the outstanding balance you this is the amount applied to the balance owed so you take this subtracted from here and we should have about two four four eight eight nine dollars sixty one cent but once again just want to recall that you see how the amount applied to interest keeps reducing that's because you don't owe them as much anymore. If you don't owe somebody that, as, as, if, you, if you owe them less, then you have to pay less interest, right? If you owe them more, you pay more interest. And that's the same as the previous table. In the previous example, okay, we started off by owing $1,000, and so our interest was $10. But then we only owed um, this amount, and so this is our interest, 921. Then we only owed this amount, so our interest was less. Then we only owed this amount, so our interest was less. So your interest payments reduce because you don't owe as much anymore. Okay, so that that's that's the idea. And then of course the amount of your payment applied to the balance will go up because you're not paying as much interest on it. Not as much of your interest is going up. Uh, not as much of your payment is going to interest. Therefore, more of your payment goes to reducing the balance. So that's how it works, right? So um, that's the big picture of it. And what we're going to do is just, for example, seven. 
go to equity again. Your equity is an in an your equity in an item is the part of the principal you have paid. So what's your equity in the land after two payments? After two payments, what is your equity in the land? How much of the land do you kind of own right now? How much have you really bought? Any idea? So after two payments this is the outstanding balance of the loan. This is the amount that you, that the bank has still lended out to you, that, that you owe to the bank. So you take the initial principal, 250000 and subtract the amount that you owe to the bank, 24659.8.74, and that is your equity. That's the amount of money that you have paid for the land so far. And that's three four zero one point two six. Okay. So, what is your equity in the land after three payments? Press pause and do this one. Okay. I hope you press pause and tried it. So the principal of the loan was two hundred and fifty thousand. The principal is the initial balance, the amount that was first lent, loaned out, the initial balance. And you subtract the amount that you owe after three payments, 244.889.74. Four er, uh, uh, okay. You subtract that, and you means you have paid five hundred five thousand one hundred and ten dollars thirty nine cent towards the um, land so far after three payments. That's the amount you've actually paid. So you kind of own this amount of the land so far, right?